Good morning, grown Black folks talk, confirmation bias, and how it sometimes causes us to miss our blessings. I did a video yesterday about you have to avoid bigotry because you do not know where your blessing comes from. But as I was walking around today, I was thinking about we need to address why it is easy for us to become bigots. All of us as human beings suffer from what's called confirmation bias. Let me break this down for you. We have a deeper need to be right and to be believed in our version of events than we have for discovering the truth of a matter. We have a much higher concern, and this is true of all human beings. And if you read, whether you believe Genesis 3 or not, when you read in there, you find out that mankind reached up for the equity to be like God, meaning that whatever, if you read Genesis 1 and 2, God can speak the universe into existence and make it any way he wants just by speaking it, if he thinks it, it is. So whether you believe it or not, this is what man was reaching for. And if you just take the story for what it is, whether you accept that as truth or you accept it as an analogy, this is what is the basis in human nature of confirmation bias. We have a desire to be seen as the arbiter of truth. Even a child telling a lie, yes, is trying to avoid trouble, but is hoping, and even a small child, that you will accept their speech as the child says it, and then it is. This is an unfortunate part of human nature. Specifically, what happens is, because we're not always aware that this is what we're doing, we, as the philosopher Aeneas Nin said, go out into the world and see the world as we are, as opposed to how it actually is. If you're someone like me, who has had positive experiences with black men, because my father was not only present, but is, was and is an excellent father. And I had two excellent grandfathers, as far as I know. Um, I mean, in the time that I knew them, and then every, on one side, and then everything that my mom and my grandma said about the grandfather I never met, excellent grandfathers, I, of course, my confirmation bias was I went out into the world and could not make sense of the fact that not all Black men were like my father, but still, if you look at and my grandfather and most of my uncles. So if you look at my personal circle of friends, I have good black men around me because I had a standard to compare people to. And what I did was just eliminate those that weren't. So no one could ever say to me that they're, you know, black men ain't, I have too many examples. But part of that is because 41 years of confirmation bias, because I expect to find men like that. I do. However, if your father was absent, meaning he failed you from jump, and that left you unprotected to deal with all the other predatory men that may be in your community who also happen to be Black, then your confirmation bias is, of course, going to be set to believe that Black men are no good. And because you expect to find that, you will. And I need to say this. If this is your background, you did not get a chance to choose better as a woman. This 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 is not set up. If the, you know your father abandoning you wasn't a thing you had a choice about. You living in a community that is one third criminal when it comes to the men is not something you had a choice about if you were born after about 1980. I was as well. My father just kept them away from the house. Therefore, functionally, they did not exist except when they tried to challenge him for the driveway. Uh, Mr. Military was not going to have it. He kept them away from the house. So I had no way of knowing that a lot of this was what was really going on. But see, here's the interesting thing. If you read the stats, the stats say, yes, one third of black men are criminals. This is true. Convicted felons. That doesn't count the misdemeanors and that doesn't count a culture that supports them. And it's still that same stat says about 7 million of those men are running legitimate businesses and they are more likely to have a black business that actually employs other black people than the 30% of Black businesses owned by Black women. So on one hand, you have a great number of law-abiding citizens who are even managing licensing. That's about 50% versus the one-third who are criminals. So really, the stats will say to me, okay, there's a lot of stuff that you're not 
by missing, but the stats for those of you that have negative confirmation bias are also saying you're missing a lot because what we do is we focus on the parts that already go with our bias. And by the way, this is why the arguments will keep on going around because people are not self-aware. The men who have negative confirmation bias toward black women are very happy to talk about the one quarter of black women who are single mothers. Well, if one quarter are, you know what that also means? Three quarters, including me and most of the black women I know personally are not. Our stats actually look quite a bit better. And they look enough better than the big company like Goldman Sachs, even though we don't have the businesses that are going to employ the most black people are willing to put $10 billion in here. Yes, our stats look better, but whatever the stats are, I mean, we could widen this out too. White people, black people in the country. Well, okay, their stats on all this, there's plenty of history, but people who have not had bad experiences with white people, generally younger, than the Jim Crow period have a very different viewpoint because confirmation bias than people who grew up under Jim Crow would have because of negative confirmation bias. Generationally, pre-integration versus post-integration. And then experiences with law enforcement versus not having experience. It's also why black men and women have sometimes have completely different viewpoints about police officers. Sometimes that happens because our experience is different, not always. In memory of Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor, and Corin, I believe Corin Stevens. Not always, but I'm just saying, you, you find more black women talking about we need police officers for our own protection because of that one third of the criminal versus black men who generally are. Uh-uh. But again, your experiences become what you go into the world looking for more of because of confirmation bias. Why am I mentioning this? I'm not up here saying that we can solve the problem. The arguments are gonna continue with the masses because most people are not going to hear this video or any like it, letting us know that what we need to do is recognize our biases so that we can operate in truth and consider people for who they actually are instead of always filtering it through the confirmation bias. Another good one is the cycle of inference. We expect to be offended by someone and then we look for an opportunity to be offended, then they do anything wrong, then we get offended, then we get more offended and it just rolls on up. That's a whole nother video, can't do that video here, but they're related to each other. All of us are human. We all have biases, and if we're not thoughtful, we tend to go out into the world and find exactly what we're looking for. It is rare for me to see a Black man doing a crime like I did in the park, but because I have studied the truth of our condition in the Black community, I can understand it now. It's more likely for me to be at a business conference led by a Black man in which I learned something. I'm going to be, by the time you see this, I will be setting up for a board meeting led by a Black board president who, and he and I, and the board have nine figures worth of stuff that a Black man had built here in San Francisco, California. Confirmation bias. You tend to find yourself in the same circles of people that you expect to meet. And then there are some of you listening that most of the Black men you know are criminals because that's been your experience. And if you have not moved from where you were in terms of location, in terms of what you expect to see in life, and because depending on where you are, that may actually be what it is, you're going to tend to see more of that. And again, I'm not saying that you're wrong, because like I said, there's just stuff I probably don't see because I'm not looking for it, just like there's stuff that you don't see because you're not looking for it. What I am asking us to do, I'm not asking us to all get together and be lovey-dovey because, you know, now we've got vetting problems if we try to do that. Uh, And as I said on the video from yesterday, I'm not saying that you have to choose anybody as an intimate partner. If if you're still operating on a confirmation bias, even if you meet a good representative, it will not make any difference because that sets up what's called cognitive dissonance. If you're not prepared to deal with your biases, It takes me a long time to recognize a a Black man who's quote unquote the same bad Black man for that reason. I have to get over the cognitive dissonance of my assumption that he is going to be a good man dealing with the facts on the ground. It takes me a little while. I'm getting better at it, but I have to conquer my cognitive dissonance. For those of you who have negative confirmation bias by Black men, should you meet a good one, and they do exist, you will have to then deal with the cognitive dissonance of 
but black men are bad. So how can he be good and waiting for an opportunity to prove that? That's what confirmation bias does. It doesn't have anything to do with the other person. It has to do with you. And that's not saying anything about what happened to you in your past because trauma and the need to be validated as someone who was victimized compounds this. But I'm not talking about what happened in your past. Whatever people did to you in your past, if they abused you, it was wrong. And I'm sorry. And it also doesn't have to do with, okay, my father was 1936. That was a different era, different kinds of men shaped by different conditions. They don't exist anymore like that. And if, well, there are some that exist. There are also 85 and 86 and 84 and 83 and 80. They don't exist as marriageable for a woman like me. They don't exist as even friends for a woman like me in, in the main. I'm, I'm, you know, some of my father's friends are like uncles to me. But that isn't what's walking around today because it cannot be. They're good men, but they're different kinds of men. And I'm gonna talk about that in my next video. But just be aware. In the future, as you continue to improve your situation, be aware, try your best. And this is true in a global society. Most of us have not traveled enough to know enough about people from other parts of the world. So we're gonna apply what we think we know about the world from our limited experience in the United States of America. Just be, I'm not telling you that you're wrong. I'm saying be aware. All of us are bound by our humanity to the extent that we are more interested in being right and being believed than we are in investigating the truth. We want to be validated and made comfortable. That's our normal human nature. Once you apply spiritual, moral, and emotional discipline, humility comes to mind, humbling oneself, recognizing that one can be wrong. That all comes with time and work. Just be aware. And if you know you need to work on that, then you need to then please do that for your own sake, not anybody else, because your past, which your confirmation biases are based on, should not be allowed to hold back your future unless you really want to live in that past. But you know, between make America great again and build back better, that's how we're in the situation we're in now. If you like it, I love it. But I recommend that you at least consider what I'm saying. All right, y'all have a good day now. I got one more video to do. Thank you for listening to this one. Goodbye.